Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna compare the new Rivian R1T electric pickup truck off-road to this, the all-new R1S SUV, all-electric SUV. Uh, why do this? The SUV is shorter, has better breakover, better departure angles, uh, maybe even better maneuverability. So let me jump into the R1T, run that first, and then get into the SUV and show you if there are any differences. So here's the deal when you're comparing the truck versus the SUV as far as off-road capability. Because the truck is longer, the wheelbase is longer, overall length is uh, quite a bit longer by about 17 inches over the SUV. You have slightly worse uh, breakover angle in the middle. You have a worse departure angle. The SUV is way above in those numbers. So I'm running this course in the truck first to show you kind of the, the benchmark uh, what the truck can do and let's see if I'll have an easier time in the SUV and Maneuverability is important. So right now I am negotiating this very tight entry point To this course Between these two trees by the way the tire traction is amazing in the soupy mud um, You know lateral traction is very important side to side uh, These scorpions all terrains are delivering that this is the first challenging part. So my, my first obstacle here is a very steep descent. And another thing I wanted to show you is that this truck I'm driving today has Expel paint protection film applied, which is now a factory option on the R1T or the R1S. The front half would cost you about $1,500 or a full vehicle like this would cost $4,500 and you can just select it as an option to protect your paint um, if you're doing a lot of um, off-roading with tight trails and branches hitting your truck that might be something to consider and I think it should be pretty easy to clean too <laughs> I'm just dropping into the abyss I'm looking at the top of the trees let me see I don't know if I have enough Uh, brake over and by the way I am using the, my brake pedal I could go one foot oh I'm sliding I'm sliding ABS is working can you hear that I did have quite a bit uh, I didn't touch my skid plate so the entire belly of the truck and the SUV um, is basically a smooth surface and it's a sandwich material compound very strong because the battery of course is in the center of the vehicle um, it's about what 134 135 uh, total kilowatt hours perhaps about 125 of those are usable the trucks range is about 315 miles on standard street tires and about 40 miles less than that on these all-terrains my second obstacle is this hill climb this very steep one once again I'm thinking about 30 degrees almost so let me see if I can get just the right amount of momentum yes I did have the right amount of momentum and still four motors of course uh, lots of horsepower total power is about 835 horsepower and 908 pound-feet of torque the front motors are tuned so they're just putting out a little bit less power than in the rear and in different modes of course uh, they work in different ways now I can, I'm in a muddy water crossing I can't see anything that's underneath this water hopefully there's no no nasty obstacles good so far a lot of control raw crawl mode I think is tuned just right I'm pretty confident I have a lot of control with my foot Obviously, there is no engine sound. It's, it's almost silent. I can kind of hear a little bit of electricity running through the motors. Now I'm approaching the second creek crossing. By the way, both of these vehicles, the truck and SUV, are aired down to about 28 psi. This is what Rivian recommends. Okay, let me try to climb over this. Okay, this is a very challenging one. This is the one where... 
I might scrape something. There's a rock right on my driver's side. And I have to go super slowly. There! So if I was to choose, or if I was to uh, come up with a list of maybe improvements, uh, I think the overall driving experience in the truck it is good for off-road. Um, this is my second experience in the truck. I also did the snow drive several months ago in Colorado on our snowy trail and, and now a very muddy east coast trail. I would say that the truck is performing really well as far as control and traction and even maneuverability. I was a little worried about how long it is and that maneuverability would be an issue. Uh, but it, it wasn't really, but I would improve. Um, maybe what I can recommend is, first of all, inclinometer off-road screen, um, kind of helpful. Also, I would say um, have another screen that shows you the power split that's going to each wheel. Because sometimes when I got stuck, for example, in the this, in this snow, I had difficulty understanding what the truck was doing, where the traction was going. So if those couple of screens uh, were added, I think the overall experience would be just that much better, but it's so good already. Now I am in the SUV, the R1S. Now I'm making this tight approach to the entrance to the trail in the SUV. Actually, I'm feeling like this is a smaller vehicle. It, it is a smaller vehicle, so it makes sense. But I, I, I felt like I did not have to make quite as wide of a turn. They're the same width, uh, but uh, the additional length of the truck, I think, makes you a little bit more aware of its size. Now I'm approaching the big drop. Let's see how the SUV handles it. Uh, the truck uh, did well. I, I was kind of sliding down with ABS. Um, it's really, 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 really muddy. And uh, the truck just disappeared. And I am still, actually I'm gonna go into rock crawl mode. And I'm, actually no, I'm gonna go on all terrain and see if I can descend this. Now you can hear it better because my window is open. And look, Regen has actually stopped me down the hill. I think that's quite uh, special. I think it was partially Regen and partially, of course, the friction brakes because at the very low speeds, uh, the Regen will not, will not be effective. Uh, but uh, one pedal driving is okay. Maybe it's not my favorite just the way I am, um, but you can definitely use one pedal driving uh, without issues. Now I have arrived to the next obstacle, which is this hill climb. Once again, very muddy and loose. I'm gonna try to do a similar approach where I'm not going too slowly, but I'm also not going too fast. Okay, I think that was really good. I mean, the all-wheel drive system is very effective. I may have needed a little bit more momentum there. Um, I think with more momentum, there is less uh, possibility for spinning the tire out of traction and less possibility of actually eroding the trail. Uh, we, of course, want to be very mindful, even though this is a private trail designed specifically for showing off-road vehicles we still don't want to eat away at it. When I was going very gingerly in the truck, I feel a little bit more relaxed because I have better departure angle, better breakover angle, and this rock right here that can be kind of nasty and sticking out. I am actually straddling it right now with no issue. Ah, uh, finally, let's get to the price. If you were to order an R1T or R1S right now, uh, the SUV, the R1S, will start at about $90,000. And the truck, the R1T, will start around eighty-five 
thousand dollars those are the new prices if you reserved your rivian truck or suv before march 1st you have that previous pricing between about 67 and a half and 72 and a half thousand dollars but now yes it'll be more expensive and the suv has a five thousand dollar premium over the truck so you got to consider that when you're making your decision okay so now i'm in this water <laughs> bathing bathing in the mud so just kind of crawling over it once again in the highest setting 15 inches of ground clearance so the power is the same the torque is the same the overdrive system is the same the battery is the same the suv gets a little bit more range about uh 315 miles 316 miles of epa rated range on street tires uh versus the truck uh charging times are about the same uh like i was saying 125 usable kilowatt hours 134 135 ish total um up to about 200 kilowatts of charge speed approaching the final creek crossing and um here's what i'm thinking about the experience of driving an electric vehicle off-road versus a traditional gasoline or diesel vehicle off-road. First of all, pedal control. In a gasoline vehicle or diesel, in order to get over the obstacle, you have to build RPM. You have to build engine revolutions and get some torque, maybe shift into low range. Um, and in low range versus high uh, gearing, obviously, depending on which uh, gearing you're in, which gear set you're in, your experience is gonna be either a little bit more smooth or jerky at lower speeds here you just have electric motors that have a wide range of speed they are able to provide slow speed crawling and also fast driving without shifting gearing and i think that just makes for a smoother experience that was pretty impressive uh, the modulation was good the clearances were good um, as far as this trailer is concerned and this event um, i think that was one of my smoothest runs Well, there you have it guys i had a blast i hope you enjoyed it too if i was leaning towards a little bit more off-road driving and if i wanted to bring more people along uh, i would choose the r1 ss uv because it was just a little bit easier to drive on this trail a little bit more maneuverable some of the clearances were better still modulation is excellent but it tows a maximum of 7700 pounds which is a bit less than the 11,000 in the truck r1t so because i tow trailers uh, i would probably have to lean towards the truck that can basically do it all because you also saw it do this off-road trail as well uh, stay tuned for a lot more videos and go back to alltfl.com for everything automotive one-stop shop for you right there